This video is brought to you by HelloFresh. Avatar The Way of Water is finally out, and I can't believe I actually just said that. Speaking not even as an OG Avatar fan, this felt like a sequel that was never gonna happen. I didn't start believing this thing existed until I was actually in the movie theater watching it. And even as I was watching it, I was still kind of in disbelief that it was an actual movie that existed. Let's get into it. Avatar The Way of Water is the sequel to James Cameron's 2009 mega hit Avatar. It has a very similar plot to the first movie where Pandora is threatened by humans, but this time Jake Sully and Neytiri have been fucking and sucking and formed a family. I will come clean. I was never an Avatar boy. I only just watched that film for the first time this week. And as I assumed it would be for years of my life, it was fine. I definitely thought it would have been a hell of a lot better on a big ass screen, which I, I don't know why I didn't take advantage of that while it was happening, but I thought the story was just sort of fine and got the job done, making a non-theater viewing of it pretty much pointless. I can see a similar argument for this new one, except that honestly they managed to make this story feel massive, despite being such a ridiculously simple story. I should also mention I also didn't really like Jake Sully in that first movie. I was kind of amazed that the protagonist in one of the biggest movies of all time was the most boring dude I can think of and his name was just Jake. James Cameron naming one guy Jake and the other guy Jack, are we- what- what is going on? Now as for this new one, they fixed that. Jake Sully is back, don't get me wrong, but the movie feels way less interested in him and more interested in everyone around him. Even the Colonel, who I really did not care for after the first movie, he ends up being one of the most interesting characters this time around. They kind of justify them randomly bringing him back to life, which some of the credit can go to Stephen Lang, who did a much better job in this movie than he did in the first. I- I really liked him in this one. But listen, you don't go to these films for the dialogue and the performances, which happens to be both this and the original film's weak spots. Jim has never hit it out of the park for me with his lines. I see you is, is not going to get better even though you've said it in three different movies. But it's one of those flaws that I'm willing to look past because the visuals... Let's talk about it. Actually, all this water talk is making me hungry. So before we get into it, I want to thank this week's sponsor, HelloFresh. Listen, the holidays are coming up, and when that happens, your schedule gets packed. And when your schedule gets packed, it makes it really hard to find time to make meals. But thankfully, HelloFresh has you covered. HelloFresh has meals covered with a weekly selection of 30-plus recipes and 70-plus convenience items, all delivered to your door. They work with your schedule to make it as easy as possible. Plans are flexible, and you can change your meal preferences, update your delivery day, and even change your address with just a few taps on the HelloFresh app. Something I really struggle with when it comes to cooking and making meals for myself is finding the right ingredients and knowing how to portion it correctly. I always end up wasting way more food than I want to. What I really love is that HelloFresh recipes include pre-portioned ingredients that mean less prep for you and less wasted food. I'm saving time, money, stress, and food. It's like the ideal way to make meals. You can use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use my code PogCarstenDeath70 for 70% off plus free shipping on your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back into the video. To make up for my first Avatar viewing, I watched this one in 3D, 4DX, big seats, whatever you want to call it, and man, I, I got the full gym experience. I guess I didn't really understand this Avatar fever that certain people have until the next day, well after I had seen the film. I'm realizing that the appeal of these movies is that Jim puts an aggressive amount of attention to detail into the world, especially this time around given the time and resources he had to work with, which makes this beautiful place feel not only real, but also tangible. You feel like you're in Pandora. It's like the ultimate form of cinematic escapism in that when it's over, you wish you were back in that world. You're not buying a ticket to to go and watch a film, you're going to hang out with your blue buddies. Which is always something I thought was a joke. I, I never thought people actually got sad when these movies were over, but the next morning I, I really did feel like I wanted to go back. <laughs> I think that's what I appreciate about it most, at least. Because I think Jim understands that to get a message across to a viewer, even those unwelcoming to it at first, you have to really invite them in and hold their hand to an extent. Given the technological resources and Jim's unique obsessive attention to detail, inviting you into a spectacle was just a given, but what wasn't was how much he managed to elevate the story. I still don't know if this is a story I feel particularly moved by most of the time. There are moments that were definitely supposed to make me cry that I <laughs> felt very numb to. I was sort of in and out of it, and I'll explain why in a second, but he certainly does enough to make you care about it, something I couldn't do if my life depended on it in that first movie. The environmental message beneath this one comes across a hell of a lot clearer than it did in the first one, too. Maybe a reach, but I like the link this film has to billionaire's space travel 
and some of society's urge to just pack up and move to another planet, and that this film ultimately makes the case for Earth, the beauty of our planet, and that leaving isn't an option, it boils it back down to, this isn't the planet's issue, this is our issue. I can't say if this thing is optimistic or pessimistic towards environmental stuff, I guess we'll see over the course of these next three movies, but I left the theater with an overall feeling of love and attention to the world around me, which is a crazy feeling to have after a movie that makes you want to live in its world too. The whole everything is connected, the water connects us all message is something I feel like I hear in plenty of movies, most of which are pretty good, don't get me wrong, but damn it, if this isn't the first movie where I was like, man, he's got a point. I guess in the first movie it felt like the story and spectacle were two different things and the story was just kind of there as a perfectly fine cookie cutter tale to keep viewers somewhat invested while they take in the breathtaking visuals. But in Way of Water, Jim doesn't just make a better, albeit still simple story, but he connects it to the spectacle in a really beautiful way. It's the kind of rare result you never see to this extent and probably won't see again until the next James Cameron movie, which is why it just felt so surreal to be watching it in front of me. Now all of this isn't to say I don't have my issues with this movie, because I definitely do. The biggest one I want to get out of the way is just the HFR, the high frame rate. Man, I gotta respect him for just going for it with this look, but it never worked for me. It felt like somebody was controlling the movie with a remote and kept changing the frame rate on me at different times. Like at least commit to one style. Anytime I started getting used to a certain frame rate, it would just switch it up on me and look choppy and unfinished. It would do it so randomly too. Like why this random insert? Why, why was that? all motion smoothie and the rest of it wasn't. I'm not the first guy to say this, but it looked like I was watching a video game in the theater, which I'm gonna be honest, just looked cheap after a while. I feel like this whole thing is about cinematic escapism, right? And a lot of this HFR really pulled me out of the experience, which I think is the opposite of what it wanted to do. Maybe that's some people's thing, maybe they like that look a lot, but because it was constantly changing up the frame rate, it felt like a video game with scenes of a movie spliced in every now and then. This was only really distracting in the first half hour or so, once it kicks into full action near the back half, I was just too giddy to care about anything. I feel like the Titanic references got a little old after a while, but you know, I, I couldn't deny just how cool some of these scenes were. My last thing I'll say about this experience is a bit about my specific theater experience because I feel like this movie, you know, it, it has a lot to do with your experience in the theater. The crowd I saw this with, consisting half of older people and younger, made this borderline unbearable. The couple to my left were speaking at full volume during most of the movie, like they had something to say about every single scene. The woman to our right would just leave her phone screen up resting on her chair's arm, so anytime she got a notification in full brightness, we all got to see it. And the guy in the row in front of us, oh my god, every five minutes, literally, he took out his phone, opened Snapchat, and was taking photos of himself with full brightness front camera flash, and would send them to like five people at a time. Which, first of all, using Snapchat in the year 2022 is one thing, doing it in a movie theater is another thing, doing it during Avatar, are we fucking serious here? I know after the pandemic most people don't go to movies unless it's a Marvel film or it's Top Gun, so everyone has pretty much forgotten how to act in a setting like this. But, and I'm sorry for being a snob, theater etiquette exists and feels like it has been completely forgotten about by most of society, and it makes me angry. And I only want to share this anecdote because even after all of that, in a movie that is so reliant on the immersive experience of it all, I still came out enjoying the movie quite a bit, which speaks to how good it really is. And that's what I have to say. Thanks for watching. Go watch Avatar The Way of Water and form your own opinion, and I'll see you in the next one.